Hello and assalamu alaikum everyone. This is Kashif Kamran and I welcome you all to the advanced audit and assurance practice to pass webinar for June 2021 exams being organized by ACCA Pakistan. Now just before I proceed further with my webinar, I just want a confirmation from your side that all of you can hear me. OK, that's great. If all of you can hear me loud and clear, uh, let's start on with the proceeding of the June 2021 webinar. Now, just before starting on with the proceeding, uh, I would like to introduce myself as a tutor. Now, in terms of my tutor profile, uh, I am Kashif Kamran. And in terms of my teaching experience, uh, it's been over 14 years since I am teaching the ACCA qualification. My specialization uh, is in both the AA paper and the AAA paper alongside the strategic business leader paper. In terms of my associations, uh, I am associated with PAC, a gold approved learning provider of ACCA in Lahore, Pakistan. And I'm also associated with Tabani School of Accountancy, which is a platinum approved learning provider of ACCA in Karachi, Pakistan. I am also a registered mentor for Oxford Brooks University Research Projects, and this is my 12th AAA practice to pass session I am conducting for the June 2021 exams. Now this is my tutor profile, and with this I welcome you again to the June 21 practice to pass webinar being organized by ACCA Pakistan. Let's start on with the proceeding. How can you reach me or how can you follow me? Uh, you can follow me on my YouTube channel, which is the youtube.com slash Kashif Kamran. You can follow me on my Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash AAA by KK. And you can email me at Kashif Kamran at the rate gmail.com. You can also contact me on my WhatsApp number, which is given on the right hand side of your screen. And during the course of the live webinar, uh, you will be provided with the link of the WhatsApp group. You can join the WhatsApp group as well for connecting with your tutor up to the day of exams. So this is uh, the channels you can explore linking with the tutor. Now proceeding further towards the practice to pass webinar for June 21 exams and the day one today. Uh, I would like to discuss first with all of you the pass rates the paper format and the examiner comments journally before starting on with my proceedings for the day one. And uh, in the first 10 minutes, uh, multiple times, I will be asking you about the clarity of my voice. So just again, please confirm me that all of you can hear me loud and clear. OK, that's that's wonderful. OK, so if all of you can hear me, let's let's start on with the proceedings of the pass rates, the paper format and examiner comments. For... Now, in terms of the objective of this practice to pass session, just like the objective of the previous practice to pass sessions I have conducted for ACCA Pakistan. The objective is to provide you the right direction to pass the AAA exams, a direction which is closer to examiner mindset. Now, since uh, I started the journey of this practice to pass webinars from March 2018, my focal point has been to bring you closer to the examiner mindset because that is the only way you can pass the AAA paper. Uh, as a tutor, I believe that AAA is not a difficult paper, but AAA is a challenging paper and you can you can overcome the challenge as a student if you bring yourself closer to the examiner mindset and my objective of the practice to pass session is to bring you closer to the examiner mindset so that you can pass the AAA paper moreover uh, these sessions uh, which are spread over the next 5 days starting from today in accumulative 15 hours of the session uh, will be a mind opener for all of you as they provide you the right tips and techniques to control the AAA paper and the right way to practice. Now, I, I believe because AAA is a challenging paper, so you need the right tips and you need the right techniques to pass the paper. 
and most of the time what I have seen students that they struggle with the right tips and techniques and they continue to struggle uh, with the AAA paper and even though they give multiple exam settings of AAA they never surpass the barrier of 50 marks because they are unaware of the right tips and techniques they need to pass the AAA paper. So I will be giving you over the five days the right tips and techniques uh, which will bring you closer to success in the AAA paper. Moreover, this practice to pass will also mitigate your misconceptions and myths around the AAA paper. A lot of students have a lot of myths and misconceptions uh, and I want to mitigate them as well during the course of my practice to pass sessions. So let's start the journey and give you the right direction to pass the AAA exams which you are planning for June 2021. Pass rates. Uh, if you look at your screen in front and you look at the recent five exam settings from December 19 to March 21, uh, the average passing rates for AAA is in the early 30s. Now that gives you a very strong message. If you look at the pass rates, which are in early 30s, and you are planning your June exams uh, with a paper which have the passing rates in early 30s, Again, I will repeat my words that AAA is not a difficult paper. It is a challenging paper and for a challenging paper, you need the right approach. You need the right direction. You need the right tips and you need the right techniques and you need to trust your tutor and you need to trust whatever the tutor is telling you and you need to follow that up to the day of exam so that you you are successful. So I hope you will all trust me. I will hope you will all follow me and I will hope you will all listen to me and you will follow the instructions, the tips, the techniques which are given to you for preparing you, yourself for the June 2021 exams. So uh, it is not something difficult to pass a AAA paper. You just need the right mindset. You just need the right approach and you need to be among the 30 percent students who pass the AAA in the very first attempt. And if you follow the right strategy, if you follow the right approach, you can also increase the passing rates. So make an ambition that you want to pass in the very first attempt uh, in the June 2021 exams. And even if you are repeating, make, make a target that this time you will pass the AAA paper and sit down and study in a very proper manner. So don't just get distracted with the low pass rates. Uh, the other students uh, who even uh, pass the AAA in the first attempt also pass the AAA paper with this challenge. So why, why not you? You can also take on this challenge, right? And you can also pass the AAA paper with these low pass rates. So, so just don't be pessimistic, be optimistic. And if you are optimistic, you will definitely pass the triple exams. Okay, uh, let's let's proceed on, right? And again, uh, a final confirmation uh, that my voice is getting through to all of you. Okay, that's wonderful for confirming that you can all hear me, right? So be optimistic be optimistic uh, that is a very strong message to all of you don't be pessimistic don't be pessimistic because if you are pessimistic you're spoiling your june 2021 exams right so let's proceed further from the pass rates of the recent exam settings and clear clarifying the fact that triple a is a challenging paper and it's not a difficult paper and over the next 15 hours of this webinar i will be mitigating your doubts, your confusions, and your fear factors around the AAA paper. Okay, moving further, the syllabus versus the AAA paper. Now, first of all, uh, make it very clear, uh, there, ha there is a journal misconception about uh, among student community uh, because in most of the countries globally, uh, the AAA has now become a computer-based exams. Uh, there are very few countries in the world which are still offering a pen and paper exam for June, but most of the countries in the world in June 2021 is offering a computer based exam for AAA and my webinar will focus on that. But there is a misconception that a lot of students are thinking that the format of the paper has changed in the computer based exams. The answer to that is no. The format of the paper is still the same 
the same paper format which you used to have in a pen and paper exam is the same format you're having in the computer based exam. So is there any change in format? No. The format of the paper still remains the same. That is you have three questions in the paper and you have to attempt all the three questions. Let let me put that in clarity in front of you. When you look at the syllabus of the AAA and you connect the syllabus with the AAA paper, uh, the syllabus area D, uh, which is the planning uh, and planning and audit of historical financial statement, and it is the most important syllabus area in, in the AAA exam, the syllabus area D, planning and the audit of the historical financial statement is tested in the section A of the paper. And the section A of the paper contains question number one, and this question number one is worth 50 marks. So in the first question, the 50 marks question, which is set in the section A, uh, the syllabus area D contributes significantly. Then when you look at the section B of the paper, the section B of the paper have two questions. So question number two of 25 marks and question number three of 25 marks each. The syllabus area E, which is about completion, review and reporting and the syllabus area F, which is about other assignments contributes heavily in the section B. So there are three syllabus areas. I'm again repeating them syllabus area D, syllabus area E and syllabus area F, which is very, very important. Syllabus area D contributes in the question number one, which is in section A. Syllabus area E and F contributes in the section B irrespective they come in question two or irrespective they come in question number three. I, I hope you're all clear on that. So these are three very important syllabus areas. What about other syllabus areas and how do they contribute to the AAA paper? Now when you look at the other syllabus areas, the syllabus area A, B and C, they can be tested anywhere in the paper they are flexible they can come in question number one they can come in question number two they can come in question number three they can be in section a they can be in section b so they are the flexible syllabus area so syllabus area a b c is known as flexible an examiner can put them anywhere but when you look at the syllabus area d that is only in the section a when you look at the syllabus area E and F, that is in the section B. I, I hope you're all clear on that. But the syllabus area A, B and C, it is the most flexible area of the syllabus. And at times you find them in section A, at times you find them in section B, at times you find them in both A and B. So that's the most flexible syllabus area. And, and we know how important ethical and professional matters are for the AAA paper. Uh, it's very difficult that you find an exam sitting without ethical and professional issues. And even it is very difficult that you find an exam sitting without quality control. Quality control is a very, very important topic. And so is practice management. Uh, the, the regulatory environment is the knowledge areas and they are tested very less. Sometimes the examiner tests you on the knowledge areas and sometimes the examiner don't. But whenever the examiner tests you on the knowledge areas, it's like 10% of the paper, but the remaining 90% of the paper is from the syllabus area D, E, F, B and C. So these are important syllabus areas which you should prepare in a very, very effective manner. I hope you're all clear on it, right? And then comes the last syllabus area, syllabus area G, which is known as current issues. Only when an examining teams write an article. Uh, current issues, uh, only come in exam paper when the examining team writes an article on a current issue uh, and it's not necessarily that if the examining teams writes an article for example for example there is an article which was published in april 2021 which i will cover in the day one of the webinar which is an exposure draft on the code of conduct now that exposure draft on the code of conduct is a current issue now will it come in the june exams it can uh, and what if it doesn't comes in the June exam, then it might come in the September exams or it might come in the December exams. It's not necessarily that the current issues are tested whenever an article comes in, even though the article has come in April 2021, an article has been put on the ACC website, which I will be covering today, which is the exposure draft on the code of conduct. 
and this is very potential uh, if you're preparing yourself for the june 2021 exams but do current issue comes in every exam setting no the current issue only comes in when the examining team writes an article on current issue so is it a regular feature of the triple exams no but is is a current issue important for the june 21 exams the answer is yes because the article on the current issue has already been published i hope you're all sound and clear on this right so is everyone clear with the syllabus versus the paper is everyone clear the flexible syllabus areas abc and is everyone clear with the definite syllabus areas def def and how they contribute to the section a and the section b of the paper and is everyone clear on the current issues if you can just reply with a yes and no okay that's great if you are understanding how the syllabus is connecting with the triple a paper now just before i proceed further towards more understanding of this uh, i i would just like to affirm something in in a very organized manner i'll be using a word file which i'll share on the whatsapp group every day this is the word file you can see in front of your screen and this word file works for me like a whiteboard everything i write on this will be shared with you at the end of the webinar can all of you see a word file in front of your screen okay that's great now first of all my big question is or a frequently asked question is how to prepare for june 21 exams let's let's make a strategy in 10 minutes and go out of it because this is a frequently asked question i was getting from students in the last six to seven days before the webinar that how should we prepare for the june 21 exams now you should understand or you should realize where are we standing today today is the 27th of april right 27th of april and if everything goes as per plan 20 7th of april and if everything goes on plan the exam day is the 7th of june we know there is a, a COVID situation globally things changes dramatically exam exams being called off drastically in the last few months so we cannot be sure but as of today we know okay the exam day is the 7th of june 2021 now you need to see how much time you have 27th of april that is today the exam day is on the 7th of june 2021 and looking at this you need to see how you should plan yourself for the 7th of june in the time you're left with now when you think how how you should plan number one thing is that you need to perform a self appraisal or a self evaluation of yourself look at yourself do a self appraisal of yourself uh, you might be a job based student or versus you might be a full-time student and you will have a different timetable you might be a full-time student so you need to see who you are uh, are you a job-based student or you are a full-time student and then you need to understand how much time can you give each day because that will vary I, I cannot give you any formula of how much time you can give each day because it will vary from a student to student uh, being a job-based student to a full-time student so how much time can you give each day this is the question you need to answer yourself how much time can you give each day from 27th of april to the 7th of june when you have your actual exams now knowing that and having performed your self appraisal and knowing your limitations what are your limitations as a student what are the barriers as a student uh, can you study on the weekdays or can you study on the weekends uh, whatever you you need to decide your plan so will all of you be making your own plans uh, doing a self appraisal of yourself from today to the 7th of june right and again can all of you hear me okay and you will be making a plan right now if if you ask me what should be part of a, of an effective plan if you're planning what should be an effective plan an effective plan would be that first of all you should focus on the core syllabus areas you should be very strong on the core syllabus areas right uh, and you should uh, focus on the core syllabus areas now what are core syllabus areas right you you should focus on areas like money laundering you should focus on areas like professional skepticism you should focus on areas like 
using the work of others, using the work of others, you should be focusing on uh, auditor responsibilities. You should be very good on auditor responsibilities for uh, opening balances. You should be very good on auditor responsibilities for laws and regulations. And you should be very good on auditor responsibilities for fraud. So these are some of the important areas you should be focusing on. Now, now come to the more important stuff. You should be very good on ethical and professional issues. You should be very good on ethical and professional issues. You should be very good on the quality control issues. You should be very good on practice management. Uh, on the practice management matters that is accepting a new audit client, accepting a new audit engagement. What are the matters you should consider when you're accepting a new audit engagement? Or further services from an existing client further services from an existing client. So you should be very good on the syllabus area C, which is about practice management. Then you should be very good on areas like uh, audit risk. Areas like business risk. And if you're good on audit risk, then you are automatically good on risk of material misstatements. You should be very good on uh, the areas of audit evidence and audit procedures. You should be very good on audit report. Uh, and all you need to know about audit report uh, should be you should be very good on that. Uh, you should be very good on communication of matters to those charged with governance. Those charged with governance. And finally, you should be very good on areas known as other assignments. And in the other assignments, you have the review of prospective financial information. You should be very good on due diligence review. You should be very good on forensic audit. On forensic audit and you should be very good on audit of performance information. Now this is just a quick summary of the core syllabus which is right in front of your screen. Now look at this. Look at this for a minute and imagine where you are standing today. How many areas which I put on the screen in front of you have you completed and how many areas are still left with? So you need to ask a question to yourself that how many areas the tutor has put on screen and I know them. I have already done them and how many areas I, I am still left with so that you make an effective timetable from today. So will these areas be helpful to you? Will you make a checklist? Will, will you make a checklist today ensuring that where are you standing for the June 21 exams? These are minimum areas, right? These are minimum areas where you should focus on. These are minimum areas which you should polish up for your June 2021 exams. So will this list help you do a self appraisal of yourself everyone? Okay, that's that's great, right? Now the next thing. Uh, first of all, you should focus on the core syllabus areas, right? That's one part of the plan. The second part of the plan is that you have to practice. And you have to practice plenty of past papers. Now when I say practice plenty of past papers, uh, you you need to practice plenty of past papers either with pen and paper if you are going for a pen and paper exam in your country or you need to practice on the CBE practice platform which I will be demonstrating in my session today. So you need to practice plenty either pen and paper if in your country you still have a pen and paper exam or you need to practice on the practice platform if you're appearing for a triple a cbe exam in your country in june 21 and i'll be demonstrating the use of the practice platform shortly so practice plenty now how much you should first practice the recent papers the recent papers now which recent papers start from september december 20 paper because march 21 paper is not available then you should focus on the uh march June 19 paper. You should focus on the March June. Sorry, you should focus on the March 2020 paper then. Then you should focus on the paper in the 2019, which is the March June March June 2019 paper. And you should also focus on 
the September December 19 paper. You should focus on the September December 19 2019 paper. Then you go down into 2018. In 2018, you should focus on the December 2018 paper. You should focus on the September 2018 paper. So these are the first priority. Whether you are appearing for a pen and paper exam or you're appearing for a, a computer based exams, these six past papers should be your priority. Should be your priority for, because from September 18, we got the new format of the paper, right? Which is still applicable. So you should follow papers from September 18 up to September, December 20 exams. And you should do them in full. And that is the best practice you can do for your upcoming exams in June 21. But if you want to do practice beyond September 18, then what will you do? I would prefer that don't do very old papers. If you want to do further papers, then further papers will be from 2016 from December 2016 onwards, but that should be your second priority. Up to June 18 up to June 2018. But if you want to do this, please keep this in your second priority, not in your first priority. I hope you're all clear with the list of papers you need to do. So practice plenty is the second area you need to focus on. The last thing read plenty of articles because that's my critical point which I keep telling students in every webinar I do and that is read plenty of articles read plenty of articles there are so many articles on the ACC website I have already recommended a big list of articles to read in my previous webinar March 2021 webinar you can watch the recording of my March 21 webinar and you can get a list of the articles you should be reading with so I believe there are three things which can be good read articles practice plenty and focus on the course syllabus areas that should be part of your plan for the june 21 exams I, I i believe this is not a difficult plan right read plenty of articles practice plenty and the final thing you need to do is that you need to focus on the core syllabus areas one focus on the core syllabus areas number two practice plenty of past papers and number three you go down with read plenty of articles, right? That's just very, very important. And please, the last thing, uh, minimum, minimum, you need to watch my previous webinars. You need to watch the previous AAA webinars. The previous AAA webinars you need to follow is at least this one, the June 21 plus you follow my March 21 webinar, you follow my December 20 webinar, and you follow my March 2020 webinar. So these are four webinars I would recommend all of you to watch, including this one, right? And uh, Sanjay Kumar, the articles you can get from the March 21 webinar. I've covered a comprehensive list of articles in the March 21 webinar. So if you watch the day one of the webinar, uh, you will get to know about the articles to read. Right. Articles are knowledge booster, right? Uh, articles give you the mindset of the examiner. So uh, I, I normally believe that articles should take precedence of a book. A lot of time you spend time on book, uh, but I believe you should spend time on articles because articles give you the right knowledge for triple exams because mostly they are written by the examining team and they give you the right exam rigor needed over the BPP and Kaplan book. Right, so I'll, I'll be telling you how you can watch my previous webinars shortly and revision kit is up to you, right? If you want, if you are a student who follows the revision kit, then that's perfectly fine. But if you're not a student who follows the revision kit and you do the past papers, uh, you can do the past papers as a tutor. I recommend doing the past papers over the revision kit. Okay, so this is how you should be going down with it. Okay, one last thing you can add here is that you can read uh, examiner reports. Uh, at least at least uh, three to four examiner reports at least three to four examiner reports of recent attempts I hope you all know about examiner reports because if you read the examiner reports at least of the three uh, three to four last exam sittings uh, this will really help you with a constructive feedback of the examiner and the examiner will tell you uh, where students are good at and where students are bad at so I, I have already recommend in my March 2021 webinar of reading the examiner reports 
so please make a habit of reading the examiner reports at least three to four examiner reports of recent attempts and that would be really helpful because they will give you a good list of constructive feedback which is much needed for you to pass the AAA paper right and this word file will be shared with you over the whatsapp group so nothing to worry about if you miss something in which is coming right in front of your screen is everyone clear with the strategy for june 21 exams right so you need to plan yourself from today to the 7th of june you need to do a self appraisal you need to find out what sort of a student you are then in terms of an effective plan you should focus on the course syllabus areas you should practice plenty of the past papers you should read plenty of articles which i recommended in the march 2021 webinar you should watch the previous AAA webinars and you should read the examiner reports. Now, if you want to watch the previous webinar, particularly you want to watch the March webinar and you want to watch the June webinar, sorry, and you want to watch the December webinar. So what you can do is you can easily go to my uh, YouTube channel I recommended at the beginning of the webinar, which is youtube.com slash Kashif Kamran. You can see that in front of your screen now. Can all of you see the YouTube page, my channel page in front of you? everyone can you see that okay so if you go to my channel which is youtube.com slash kashif kamran you will find the march webinar on my youtube channel the day one day two day three day four and day five and you will also watch the december webinar on my youtube channel so it's pretty easy that you go to my youtube channel and you follow my previous webinars and i hope it's a pretty simple address youtube.com slash kashif kamran I, I can even share the link of this in the chat box with all of you i hope you all got this link right in your chat box okay now moving back towards my presentation we were discussing the format of the paper and we were discussing how different syllabus areas contribute to your 100 marks paper now moving away from that and moving away from making an effective plan uh, i've already made it clear the paper format right the paper format consists of section a and section b you have 150 marks question in section a and you have 225 marks question in section b and the section a consists of a 50 marks question and that 50 marks question includes four professional marks which are available for writing a briefing note which i will make clear as i proceed towards my agenda for the day one so a pretty simple paper format if anyone is doing AAA for the first time three questions which is to be attempted in like three hours and 15 minutes so that's like 195 minutes plenty of time if you go down writing a realistic answer now moving away from the paper format this is what i need to recommend all of you if you're preparing for the june 21 exams this is my recommendation to all of you you should watch my december 20 webinar and i hope you can see the hyperlink you should watch my March 21 webinar and I hope you can see my hyperlink here. When you watch the previous webinar, follow the guidance. Follow the guidance I've given in the previous webinars. Follow the recommendations I've given in the previous webinar and read all the articles I have recommended in the previous webinar. So at least the December 20 webinar and the March 21 webinar is essential for all of you as you prepare for the June 2021 exams and you should be following my recent webinar which is going live now the June 21 webinar and again whatever guidance I give you in the June 21 webinar whatever uh, recommendations I give you in this webinar and whatever articles I tell you to read in this webinar must also be followed so if you go with this three webinars uh, 15 hours from December 20 15 hours from March 21 and 15 hours from June 21 so that's like 45 hours and that will be real real good preparation for the june 2021 exam so will you make a habit of going with december 20 and march 21 webinars and the june 21 webinars till the 7th of june in total these are 45 hours right which can be really really good for all of you right so the hyperlinks have been given you just need to click on the hyperlink or you just copy the hyperlink in the address box of your search engine and you will reach the december 20 webinar okay that's great now moving on further and taking a quick look at the examiner feedback before i start with my agenda of the day one 
uh, I just tried to took some feedback of the examiner from a very recent examiner report, which was published in September, December 2020 exams. And there were some journal comments of the examiner, which can be really, really beneficial for all of you. Number one comment of the examiner is the candidates should note that accounting standards listed within the SBR syllabus are also examinable in the AAA paper. So you should have a very good command on the accounting standards if you're preparing yourself for AAA paper. And that is the reason it is recommendable that you do your SBR paper before the AAA. If any one of you has attempted SBR recently, you will have a very good accounting knowledge and you stand in a better position to pass the AAA paper in the first go. So the more updated accounting knowledge you have, the better you will be in the AAA paper. So it is highly recommendable that you do the SPR paper before and the AAA paper after because that is what the examiner is telling that you should be good on the accounting standards and every accounting standard you do in the SPR paper. Number next, marks are awarded at the AAA level for the application of knowledge. See this, no rote learning, no rote learning. If you believe you will get marks for writing generic stuff, no. If you believe you get marks for writing the rote, no, rote learn knowledge, no. If you believe I will reproduce the BPB book and the Kaplan book and I will get marks, no. You will only get marks for application, which is the case study. You look at the case, you read the case, and you understand the case, and then you write an answer which is sync with case, sync with case. If your answer is sync with case, you will pass the AAA paper. I hope you're getting this message sync with case. So if your answer is sync with case, you will pass. So try to produce an answer in AAA exams, which is sync with case. That is the best answer. So application, not, not the rote learning, right? Okay, moving on, next one. Candidates should ensure that they are fully conversant with the financial reporting standards covered by SBR to maximize their ability to effectively identify audit risk that may arise from the issues and propose effective procedures. So you should be fully conversant with your accounting knowledge you do in the SBR paper because that accounting knowledge will really help you in identifying the audit risk, which is in the question number one, and that accounting knowledge will help you propose effective procedures. So if you want to be good on procedures in the AAA paper and you want to be good on the audit risk in the AAA paper, then you should be fully conversant with the SPR knowledge. So again and again, the examiner is reinforcing that you should be good at the accounting standards. And these are comments from the recent exam setting, the September, December 20. Moving on, a common feature of a weaker answer in this subject is to use rote learned knowledge without application to a specific scenario. I, I hope that's self-explanatory, right? Application is success, not rote learning. If you are a rote learn student, you will fail in the AAA paper. But if you are an application student, you read the case study, you identify the answer from the case study, and you sync your answer with the case study, you will definitely pass the AAA exam in the very first exam sitting. So AAA is not a difficult paper, it is a challenging paper. So note rote learn answers, right? Further, candidates should be able to synthesize and evaluate material. Simply stating knowledge without explaining is of no use. You should synthesize and evaluate. Just, just producing knowledge without explaining is useless. Now, whenever you identify something from a case study, you're reading a case, right? And you identify something from a case study. Now, once you identify something, you need to explain that. And when you are explaining, you need to develop your point. You need to develop your point. Develop your point. Now, I believe if you want to develop a good point, it takes like three to four sentences. If you are developing a good point, it takes like three to four sentences to develop a good point. I'm not saying three to four lines. I'm saying three to four sentences. A sentence is when you put a full stop. So if you look at my bullet number one in front of your screen here, my bullet number one consists of two sentences because there are two full stops coming in it. So I'm saying three to four sentences is what 
it takes to develop a very good point for triple a paper evaluate the material so it's not just you put the knowledge it's about linking that with the case study it's about explaining that in the context of case study right so i i hope you're clear on that synthesize and evaluate and i'll be exploring that more over the next four days synthesize and evaluate is that clear to all of you the point number one on the screen so synthesize and evaluate right that's that's, that's very very important okay now moving away from synthesize and evaluate This is very important, right? This is particularly important with responses relating to procedures. The purpose of procedure must be given and ethics where knowing the name of an ethical threat will not be awarded credit. It's in its own right, rather identifying a specific way in which the threat arises to a given scenario and the implication to a specific case. See what these the examiner telling you the examiner is saying it's not just a procedure you are writing in the exam paper. You will get marks if you write the purpose of a procedure so purpose of a procedure is very very important and then the examiner says it's it's not just the name of the threat self-review threat self-interest threat which will give you marks it is that you have to identify the specific way in which the threat arises in a given scenario and the implication in the specific case to attain credit it's not just you say oh this is a self-review threat no you need to tell why it is a self-review threat in the context of the case what's the implication of the self-review threat in the context of the case and what's the logical safeguard so you need to develop a reasonable point of three to four sentences so the ethical threat explaining why it is an ethical threat and justifying a relevant safeguard that that is wonderful marks and if you're writing a procedure, you know, you can, you know, you cannot just say review the board minutes. You need to write a procedure with a purpose. Review the board minutes to confirm the business rationale of acquiring a subsidiary or review the board minutes to confirm the approval and the business rationale of acquiring a subsidiary. You should write a procedure with a purpose. So it's not just you write the knowledge. It's more important that you evaluate your answer and you develop your answer to a reasonable length to score marks in the AAA paper. I, I hope you're all clear on the bullet number two. The next one, appropriate exam technique should be developed using question practice for the skill of time management, reading relevant articles and exam technique articles published on ACZ website and the past examiner reports. So have I recommended you that shortly on my word file? Examiner reports, reading the articles, relevant technical articles and practice. Is th this is the message from the examiner practice read articles and read examiner reports and you will be successful i i hope you follow this and i hope you seriously follow this so uh, practice the past papers read the examiner reports and read the technical articles because that's where the clue is nowhere the examiner is saying read the books nowhere is, is the examiner saying read the textbook the examiner is saying practice read articles read examiner reports and you will be successful I, I hope you're all clear on that, right? So the, the, this is the feedback and I, I recommend you to read the feedback yourself. Uh, read the examiner reports yourself because from the examiner report you get so constructive feedback which could be real, real important for you. So I hope this uh, journal feedback which I discussed in the last 10 minutes must have given you something. If nothing. Everyone. Okay, that's, that's, that's great. Okay, moving on. Now coming to the main agenda of the webinar, agenda of the practice to pass. Now this, this webinar for June 21, uh, organized by ACC Pakistan is spread on five days. What's the agenda each day, starting from today, so that you, you know the right agenda and you come prepared each day. Let's forget the agenda. On the day one, which is today, 27th of April, I'll be looking at the computer based exams and I will be putting time on the practice platform to give you the do's and don'ts of the practice platform shortly because in most of the countries in June 21, the AAA paper will be computer based. So I need to spend time on the computer based environment and in certain countries, there is still a pen and paper exam. You can still benefit from this webinar 
because the exam techniques the marking scheme the way you write the answer remains the same whether you do it with pen and paper or you do it on the computer based platform the only thing that changes is the interface from paper to computer the rest you can benefit from this webinar and the previous webinars and i will i will be discussing the new article recently published in the last one hour of my webinar today and if some uh, if the time gets over then i will continue with the new article recently published in the day two so if anything is left down it will, it will then restart the same thing from the day two then on the day two i will be discussing the business risk and the risk of material misstatement uh, i'll be i will be spending more time on business risk because in my last webinar which was my march 21 webinar i focused aggressively on risk of material misstatement and audit risk so i would recommend you that for the risk of material misstatement and for the audit risk you should watch my previous webinar which i just recently conducted for march exams but i will focus uh, extensively on business risk in my day two in the day three i'll be looking at ethical professional and quality control issues that's a core feature of the paper and i can i cannot skip that on the day four i'll be looking at audit evidence and procedures because last time in my march 20 webinar i focused on other assignments so if you want to focus on other assignments you can watch my march 2021 webinar and on the day five i'll be looking at the audit report i cannot skip audit report as a topic because it's such a fundamental area of the AAA paper now each time i perform a webinar uh, and I know that I have just performed a webinar three months ago. I need to keep it different. Now, what is the difference in this webinar? First of all, I am focusing on the AAA CBEs, which I didn't focus on in my last webinar. I'm focusing on the new article. So this is another new thing I'm doing this time. I'm focusing on the business risk, which I didn't perform in the last webinar. And I'm focusing on audit evidence and procedures, which I didn't perform in my last webinar ethical professional and quality control issues was even in the last webinar and this webinar the audit report was in the last webinar and this webinar but i'm taking on new exam papers which i've not performed in the previous webinar so again my message is loud and clear to all of you how many webinars you need to watch to be very well prepared for june 21 exams number one the december 2020 number two the march 21 and number three the june 21 right so if you follow these three webinars, you will get everything you need to know to pass the June 21 exams. I hope that has been documented by all of you in an effective manner. Right, so forensic audits was covered in the March 2021 webinar Bahawal and any any other topics uh, you need to watch the three previous webinars to be controlling all the topics because every in every webinar I keep changing topics so that there is no element of uh, repetition in my webinars right okay so let's move on to the agenda for day one and the big agenda for day one today is the computer-based exams and is to prepare you on that triple a cbe's and the new technical article triple a cbe's that's a big question that's a big question for the student community because i have seen so many students puzzled with the computer-based exams and they have such a big fear factor as if as if something big has happened you're all used to with computers you are right every day you use smartphones you're so good on typing you have so wonderful typing speeds um, i i hope the computer literacy is there uh, we are living in 2021 when the computer literacy is considered to be very high globally and still the student community have a fear factor still they believe pen and paper exams are good and i'll be proving in the next one hour that the computer-based exams have more advantages than the pen and paper exams so let's start on with the journey and let's find out the students questions on the AAA cbes and how to mitigate them and again if i miss something out on cbes over the next four days to follow i will be practicing on the practice platform so if even if i miss something out today i will be catching on them on the day two day three day four day five because over the next five days i'll be using the practice platform i will be guiding you the features of the practice platform i will be writing the answer on the practice platform so i can drill i can drill as a tutor in front of you the do's and don'ts of the practice platform i, I hope you're all clear on that right so over the next 15 hours you will have a command on the practice platform you will know the do's and don'ts of the practice platform and you exactly know how to how to handle the practice platform so let's start the journey 
today and over the next five days because I have to give some time for the technical article as well. So even if I miss something from the computer based exams, I still have the next four days to catch up. I hope you're all clear on that, right? Okay, moving on the practice platform. Now, in terms of the practice platform, how to prepare an Excel on the practice platform, the CBEs, the AAA CBEs, right, from June 21. Even in Pakistan, we have the AAA CBEs, and again, Pakistan is a big market, and we are converting to computer-based exams for the first time from June. Let's see some of the questions. Number one, the shift from pen and paper exams to CBEs, right? And I hope uh, a lot of you might be giving AAA in a computer-based environment for the first time. You must have given some of your older papers like F4, F5, F6, F7, F8, F9 in the computer-based environment, or you might have given any strategic level exams in a computer-based environment, but a lot of you might be giving the AAA in a CB environment for the very first time, right? So we need to focus on how you can excel on the computer-based environment. Student fear factor, but why? Over the next one hour, I will be giving you the answer, but why? What's the fear factor? Because once I demonstrate the practice platform, then I will ask you, what's the fear factor? Be prepared for that. Advantages of CBs, I will be discussing them over the next one hour. How to excel on the practice platform. Again, over the next one hour, I'll demonstrate. And again, uh, the answers to these questions will automatically be available as I start to speak over the next one hour. ACCS support and resources for CBE exams, improving your typing speeds, how can you improve your typing speeds? And this is all what I need to focus on, preparing and excelling in a computer-based exams for AAA, right? Are you all ready to start looking at the computer-based environment for AAA and looking at the answers to the students' fear factor, advantages, how to excel, the supports and resources and improving your typing speed, right? Let's let's start on with the journey. Okay, now let's see how to go about it. Okay, you come to this page, the AAA CBE introduction, right? This is the page, Advanced Audit and Assurance, AAA CBE introduction. I'm just sharing the hyperlink of this with all of you. You must have got the hyperlink, right? You come to this page where you have everything you need to know about the AAA CBE, right? So in on this page about AAA CBE introduction, you scroll down the page, and when you scroll down the page, you have wonderful resources given by ACCA. The first is an on-demand webinar, Get Ready for AAA CBE. You can, you can uh, register for this on-demand webinar and you can start to watch this in the next 24 hours, right? So I would prefer that all of you get registered for this on-demand webinar and start to watch this on-demand webinar in the next 24 hours. That's number one. Number two, there are some very good videos on the practice platform, which ACC has published. If you just click on the CBE practice platform videos and you get to the next page right here, See CBE practice platform and there are so many good videos which ACCA has put here almost like five videos. I hope you can see the five boxes in front of your screen. These are five videos introduction to the practice platform using the blank workspace uh, assigning content to yourself managing your workspace and finally using the scratch pad. So wonderful videos if you want to get yourself aware of the practice platform. So ACCA has provided you good amount of resources on how you should be preparing for the AAA CBE. Uh, then there is a document, a strategic professional CBE platform guidance document. I'll be showing you this guidance document in my session today because this is a wonderful guidance document. It has also been included in the resources today, right? If you can see the handouts in front of your screen, in the handouts, you will see that this strategic professional CBE platform guidance document has been included in the resources and I'll be sharing this handout with you shortly over the screen. This is the handout, right? CBE guidance, strategic professional, SPR, AFM, APM, ATX and AAA. Uh, all the rules and regulations about a computer based exam is in this document. So it's better you start reading this document, right? Okay, moreover, there is the AAA CBE question practice, and there is a basic spreadsheet and word processing support. So lots of resources which you can click and explore as a student, and I believe you will, right? 
Now, how would you log into the practice platform? You go down. Sorry, you come to this page right in front of you, which is the CBE question practice platform. I'm sharing the hyperlink of this page as well. This is the hyperlink. I've shared the hyperlink, right? The CBE question practice ACC practice platform in front of your screen. You go down and you can see over here log into the practice platform. Can all of you see this log into the practice platform? Can you just confirm me? Can you all see this log into the practice platform? Okay, good. You click on this log into the practice platform and the moment you click on log into the practice platform, a window will appear in front of you which will ask you your ACCA ID and password, your my ACC login, right? So you will enter through your my ACC login. So the moment you click on to it, log into the practice platform, you will see a window asking your ACC registration number and password, which is the one you use for my ACC. Is that clear to all of you? Please confirm that. So you provide you provide your login your my ACC login and you will come to a screen which looks like this can you look at the screen this is now after you log in you will come to this screen i hope you must have seen the screen before entering the webinar today and if you're not look at the screen for the first time once you log in you come here can you see this screen everyone assigned material on the left hand side and can you see a catalog coming on the right hand side everyone Please confirm that. Okay, that's great. Now, when you look at the right hand side of the screen, can you see the catalog? And in the catalog, you can see all the papers advanced audit and insurance, advanced financial management, advanced performance management, right? Now, we are clicking on the first paper, right? Which is advanced audit and assurance. Now, if I click on the first catalog, advanced audit and assurance, you can see a plus sign. I'll click on the advanced audit and assurance in the plus sign, and it goes down this way. We have a blank workspace. We have the AAA International. We have AAA Ireland and we have AAA UK. Obviously, I'm teaching the AAA International, so I'll click on the AAA International. If you are appearing for AAA UK exams, then you will click on the AAA UK. Uh, the way of practicing remains the same, only a bit of change in the paper format, right? So I hope you can see over here the uh, drop down menu. And in the drop down menu, you have a blank workspace. You have AAA International, you have AAA Ireland, and you have AAA UK, right? Now, what I will be demonstrating today is the blank workspace, and I will be demonstrating the international. I have no concern with Ireland and UK. You can explore that on your own if you're going with that. Okay, now once you click on the uh, other parts of it, okay, now first of all, I click on international to see the past papers. Now, once you click on the international, you will see the ACC official resources. You click on the ACC official resources and you come with past exams and specific exams. How many past exams have ACC provided you to practice on the platform? One, two, three, four. So you have four past exams, December 18, March, June 19, September 18 and September, December 20. So four exams have been provided to you by ACCA to practice on the platform and then there is a specimen exam which is the AAA international specimen so how many total exams you have which you can practice on the platform in total five the four past exams and the one specimen exam is everyone clear on that so how many past exams can you practice on the platform to improve your typing speeds and to understand understand the platform five and five is not a bad number right five is not a bad number to get good on the practice platform and if any past exam is not available on the practice platform then you can use the blank workspace I i'll be guiding you about the blank workspace shortly but currently i'm guiding you about the five exams which are available on the acca practice platform before i give you a guidance about the blank workspace okay let's start any with any one of the paper okay suppose you start with the march june 19 exams or you start with September, December 19 exams. First of all, you have to click on the button assign. The moment you click on the button assign, the paper will be assigned to you. 
and where will you see the assigned paper? It will go on the left hand side of the screen. Can you see the left hand side of the screen over here, which says uh, self assigned material? Self assigned material. So the moment you click on uh, the paper and you say assign, it will come on the left hand side of the screen uh, under the self assigned material. Is that clear to all of you? Right. And then you can click on it and start. Let, let me demonstrate that. Let me demonstrate you that, right? Okay, so suppose uh, I start with the September, December 2020 paper. Uh, I click on it, assign. The moment I assign it, it will come on the left hand side of my screen. I'll scroll down and see where the paper is. Uh, and I believe over here the paper is the September, December 20 paper, and it says resume because I was already working on it. If you if you assign the paper, it will say start because because I was already working on it prior to the webinar. So it says resume where I left. But if you do it, it will say start. So this is your assigned paper September, December 20. You click on resume or you click on start and you come to the practice platform. Right, this is the screen in front of you. The practice platform screen. It says section A and it define it tells you about the section a in front of your screen now understand one thing when you open the practice platform at home you will see the instruction screen in front of you and the instructions are given for the students to read in the exam you have 10 minutes to read the instructions in total you have 205 minutes in which 10 minutes is for the instructions and 195 minutes is for your paper which is the normal time you had in the pen and paper exams of 195 minutes, right? So when you read the instructions in 10 minutes, you read the instructions. Please ensure that when you're practicing at home, read the instruction screens carefully. So you are habitual of instructions before you enter the actual exams. Now, once you complete the instruction screens, you will come to the screen which is in front of you, which is section A. And it says the section one consists of one question for 50 marks and you all know that right and it says uh, it, it says an import uh, it says that show all. Show all notes and workings that you want the marker to see within your responses. Remember any notes and working on the scratch pad will not be marked. So if you write anything on the scratch pad, it will not be marked. So you not want to write your answer in the proper responses area given by the examiner. Now you click on the next at the bottom of the screen and you come to the section A. The 50 marks question. It's just loading up. Okay, the question has been loaded up, right? This is the first question for 50 marks. Now look at the screen. Look at the interface very, very carefully. Now this is the first 50 marks question. You can see the left panel and you can see the right window. Can everyone see that if you can be a bit quick to your responses now? Can you see the left panel and the right panel? Can you see the split of the screen everyone? Okay, now let me demonstrate you that quickly. Now, when you come to your question number one for 50 marks and you know that you should know how to go about reading it, right? That's that's very important. Now, let me make you familiar with that. First of all, when you enter the question number one, the very first thing you need to read is what? The very first thing you will read is this. This should be your number first. This is basically known as the introduction. So the screen I've marked with a circle first is the screen you will be reading first because this screen will tell you about who you are. This screen will tell you about the name of the audit firm. This screen will tell you about the name of the company of which you are the auditor and this screen will tell you about the number of exhibits which have been provided to you. So this is an introductory screen. So you will read this first. Is everyone clear with the order? So the very first thing you will read is the screen on the right hand side, which I have circled and put first. Is that clear everyone? Now once you read the introductory screen, where will you go then? From here you will jump to here. Number two. 
partner email. The partner email tells you about what you need to do for 50 marks. The partner email will tell you the requirement A, the requirement B, the requirement C and the requirement D. I hope you're familiar with that even in the pen and paper exam. The partner email, which is the exhibit one, used to tell you about what you need to do. So where will you go at number two? The partner email. Now once from the partner email, you know what to do. A, B, C, D. You will organize your briefing notes. You know the answer for the question number one is to be given in a briefing note. Is that yes? Is that no? Right, so once you know from the partner email what you need to do, you will come down and you will organize your briefing note. I will be demonstrating that shortly, right? One, two, three. So once you read the partner email, you will come to the briefing note, the response option, the response option here. Uh, you will come to the response option here, the briefing notes, and you will start to set up your briefing note in terms of the partner email. Now, once you've set up the briefing note in the response option, now you need to write an answer. Now, to write an answer, you have to read the exhibits here. Exhibit 234, which is basically the case. So you will read the exhibit 234 at number fourth. Because the, the exhibits number two, the exhibit number three, the exhibit number four will help you find the answer. You will be filling up in the briefing note. And if the examiner has asked you to perform the analytical procedure, then you need to write, then you need to use the spreadsheet. There is a very minimal use of spreadsheet in AAA. I will be guiding you about that on my day two tomorrow. I will be demonstrating the use of the spreadsheets tomorrow on day two, but there is a very minimal use. Only if a question asks you to perform an analytical procedure, then only you are using a spreadsheet for five to 10 minutes only. But if a question doesn't ask you to perform an analytical procedure, then the spreadsheet is a useless document to be used in a AAA paper. Is that clear? And how to use a spreadsheet for five to 10 minutes and what are you putting in the spreadsheet? I will be guiding you about that in my day two tomorrow when I take on a risk question, which is the question number one. Is that clear? So is everyone clear with the first, second, third, fourth order? So what are you reading first in the exam? Can all of you give me the answer? What are you reading first in the exam? The left, the left window or the right window? The intro page, which is the left window or the right window? Perfect, right window. Okay, from from the right window, where will you go? Number two, what will you what will you read at number two? The partner email, and from the partner email, where will you go? To the briefing notes, and then from that you go to the background information. Uh, why are you not reading the requirements here? Why are you not reading the requirements? Because it simply tells you that 46 marks are in the partner email and four marks is for the briefing note. So that's useless to read the requirement because the requirement is just telling you there are 46 technical marks and four professional marks and you are already aware of that. You know the partner email contains the 46 technical marks and when you write the answer in a briefing note format, you get the four professional marks. So uh, it's just a waste of time that you click on the requirement and read it. So it's better just read the partner email and start your answer. Is that clear to everyone? Let, let me demonstrate you that. One, two, three, four. Now I'll demonstrate the same to you. One, two, three, four. Right? Okay, let's go down with one, two, three, four before I give you the break. Okay, now please watch it carefully. One, two, three, four. Okay, now see, I, I, I'm a student like you. I come to the exam hall. I open up the question number one and in front of my screen, I have the question number one, right? Now in the question number one, uh, I open up just one minute. Okay. Uh, I open up my introductory page, which is in front and I start to read it. Uh, it tells me uh, it is the 1st of July. You are a manager. So that's an important information. You are a manager. So I put a highlighter here. I click on the highlighter. I press the yellow button and I you are a manager in the audit department of Pegasus company. Okay, Pegasus company is the audit firm. So I highlight Pegasus company. Uh, a firm of chartered certified accountant. You are assigned to the audit of the Crux Group. Okay, the Crux Group is my company of which I am the auditor. I highlight that in yellow, which has a financial year end of 30th of September. So the year end of the company is 30th of September. That's an important information. And a more important information is it's a listed company. So I highlight that. So that's the only way you can annotate in a computer based exam. So I am a manager in Pegasus for Crux Group, and 30th September is the year end and it's a listed company. 
Pegasus was appointed uh, auditor to the group in January 20X5. So this is the first year audit. You were appointed in January 20X5 and the year end is 30th of September 20X5. So is this the first year audit everyone? So is that an important information I should be highlighting? Can you all recognize this is the first year audit? January 20X5 and 30th September 20X5. So have we been appointed for the first time? Definitely. Okay. The group operates in a travel industry. Okay, so they are part of the travel industry. Let's highlight that the nature of the business and they're offering worldwide tours and fleets of 20 cruise ships. The group operates three brands which provides different types of cruise experience. So the group have three brands and the three brands provides different sort of cruise experience. So they are into the travel business, right? The leisure industry. The following exhibits available on the left hand side of the screen provides relevant information so the following exhibits where are the exhibits on the left hand side of the screen right exhibit one two three four on the left hand side of the screen now i hope if you're familiar with the triple a paper every time the first exhibit has to be a partner email is that true is that false every time the first exhibit has to be a partner email because the partner email contains the requirements so you will read the partner email because it will give you the requirements then the second exhibit every time in the exam paper will be a background information because the background information will tell you about the crux group, uh, the problems relating to crux group, the risk relating to the crux group. So if you want to find the audit risk and the risk of material misstatement, bulk of your answer will come from the background information. Then you have the selected financial informations. I hope you know that the selected financial information is the most common exhibit in the AAA paper and you can find a lot of risk from financial information. I hope you hold that as true and mostly mostly the last exhibit whatever the last exhibit is whether it is a four or whether it is a five the last exhibit always is about a specific requirement this last exhibit every time in the AAA paper whether it is number four or it is number five it is about a very specific requirement which is given in the partner email it is about a specific requirement given in the partner email. So normally examiner puts the exhibit four or exhibit five for a very specific requirement, but the first exhibit is about the requirements. The second and third exhibit is about finding the audit risk and the risk of material misstatement or the business risk. And the fourth or fifth exhibit is about a particular requirement in the partner email. How much time you believe will you be spending on reading this introduction in exam? Two to three minutes. Is that fine with this highlighting option yellow? If you practice, is that possible in exam to do it in like two to three minutes? And using the highlighters is, is highlighter effective way of annotation because that's the only way you can annotate in a computer based exam, right? You cannot write on the screen. Uh, in the session I'm writing on the screen, but that's not part of the computer based exams. The only thing part of the computer based exam is the yellow is the highlighter. OK, now once you read with the first screen, you come to the screen on the left and you start to read the exhibits. Okay, now I, I know I'm the manager and I know I am representing Pegasus and my audit client is Crux and we're doing the first year audit. Okay, now I come to the partner email. Now, the moment I open the partner email, this is my requirement. I open the window, I can, uh, I can move the window anywhere. I can move the window left, right, up, down, wherever you want to put it. So I put the window here and I start to read it what is given in the window i can increase the size of the window if you want to i can reduce the size of the window if you want to so that's all the options you have here right now i start to read the window it says to the manager from norma star the audit engagement partner subject audit planning for the crux group date is the first of july hello i have provided you with some information which you would use in planning the audit of the new client so it's very clear over here it's a new client and the crux group which the financial year end is 30th of september so the the partner is writing the email to the manager and the partner likes the manager to start the planning of the new client i require you to prepare a briefing note so it's very clear over here that you want to write the answer in a briefing note format that's a standard format of the AAA paper and what you need to do in the briefing note how many things you need to do in the briefing note a can you see this a over here then you want to do the b in the briefing note whatever the b is then you want to do the C in the briefing note. Now see, uh, can you see over here using the information in exhibit four? Is the examiner telling you that the answer for C and D is in the exhibit four? 
So are you very clear that the exhibit four is being developed for a particular requirement? So that means I will only be reading the exhibit four for requirement C and D, but I will be reading the exhibit two and three for requirement A and B. Is that right, everyone? Right, so you read the right hand side of the screen in just two to three minutes, right? Go ahead. And then after two to three minutes reading of the right hand side of the screen, you start coming to the partner email and you start to read the partner email. Now, how many requirements I need to do in the partner email? A, B, C, D. But for the C and D requirement, I have a specific exhibit. And the moment I read the partner email, now what should I do? I open my briefing notes immediately. See, the briefing note comes in front of my screen. I put this window in front of my partner email. Now, briefing note. Now understand this is like a word processor the briefing note where I need to put my answer. Uh, Rabia, I'm just just coming down to your answer, right? Uh, you open up the briefing note and in the briefing note you need to write the briefing note. Uh, you can increase the size of the font to write up the answer. Can you see this paragraph option here? My cursor on the paragraph. I click on the paragraph and there are so many ways I can format my answer heading one heading two heading three heading four. Can you all see that? So the heading one is very big size of heading, so I don't like it, but I normally recommend students to use the heading two. Heading two is a very appropriate size of writing answer. So I click on the heading two in the paragraph and I write over here. Briefing. Brief. Briefing note and under the briefing note, I'll say to from subject. Or you can just say to from subject date and you come to introduction. I hope you know all these formats introduction and the briefing note ends with a conclusion. And how many things I need to do in the briefing note? Anyone remembers that? A, B, C, and D. See how easy that is to format the briefing note uh, in a computer based exam as compared to a pen and paper exam. I just put a heading briefing note. I say two from subject date introduction ABCD conclusion. Now as I start to fill up. I, I, the space will automatically be created. If you're doing this in a pen and paper exam, you're not sure of the space. But if I'm writing on a computer, I'm, I'm writing the answer for a the B will shift down. If I'm writing the answer for B, the C will shift down automatically, right? So is, is it easier to put a format to from subject date introduction A, B, C, D, and conclusion? Right, so is, is that format clear now to see how easy the two is you come back to the partner email. Can you see the screen in the backdrop partner email? Yes, yes, you need to label A, B, C, D, right? You come back to the partner email copy paste such an imp important feature of a computer based exam. Okay. Uh, to whom are we writing the email? Are we writing the email to are we writing the briefing note to the partner or the manager? Partner, right? So two. Can I copy the name of the partner from the briefing note? Norma Star Audit Engagement Partner. Control C. And I come here to and in the two, I say control V. See how easy that is? I see the control C. I come here control V. You can use the shortcuts control C control V. See I need not to type the name of the partner now from who is the from here. The from will become the manager opposite. So I say control C. I come to the word processor and in the word processor I say control V. Manager subject the subject will not change. So I go back to the partner email. I copy the subject audit planning for crux group. I control C that. I come back to the briefing note and I say control V. Is that fine? Date. I copy the date. Control C, 1st of July 20x5 because it was given. Control C, I come back to the briefing note and I say control V. See how easy that is? I need not to type anything. I'm just saying control C and control V. Introduction and conclusion. Now, what's what's the introduction? I, I need to write the introduction, right? I say the purpose of writing. Yes, you can write RE as well. You can write subject. You can write RE both are fine. The purpose of writing this briefing note. The purpose of writing this briefing note is to. 
No, if the date is not given, then you will not write the date. The date was given, so I write the date. If the date is not given, please don't write any dates in the exam paper because it was given, so I write it. Is that clear? Rohit. Okay, that's great. Moving on. Uh, introduction. The purpose. The purpose of writing this briefing note. Can can I can I make this briefing note presentable? Yes, sometimes the examiner gives you a date in the briefing note, so write it. Sometimes the examiner don't give you a date in the briefing note, then don't write it, right? See, I can do control B, bold. Two, I can see control B. I can say control B. It's, you can do so much good formatting in the computer-based exam. Control B. I hope you know the shortcut keys. Control C, control B. Control B for making something bold. Control U for underlining something, right? You should be familiar with that, right? Okay, now the purpose of writing the briefing note for how many? What is my purpose of writing the briefing note? Can anyone tell me? Is that A, B, C, D? Is that A, B, C, D? The purpose of writing the briefing note A, B, C, D. Right, so the purpose of writing the briefing note what number one? I can copy the A from here. The purpose of writing the briefing note is to evaluate the audit risk control C. Control C. I come back to the word file and I say the purpose of writing the briefing note is to control V evaluate the audit risk comma. I go back to my partner email number B. De uh, design the principal procedures design the principal procedures to be performed on segmental information control C. I come back to my briefing note and I say control V. So see how easy that is. The purpose of writing this briefing note is to evaluate the audit risk, design the principal audit procedures on the segmental information. Again, I put a comma. Next, what else I need to do? Uh, number C. Evaluate the matters. Evaluate the matters to consider in deciding whether Pegas and company should accept the engagement. It's control C, and I come back here on my briefing note and I say control V. I should make E small evaluate the matters and finally. And the last requirement from the partner email respond to my request use uh, regarding the use of data analytics to enhance order deficiency use of data analytics to enhance order deficiency is the last requirement. Control C and I come back to my word processor and I say and this full stop. See how easy was it to write the purpose introduction. I just copied the requirements from the question and paste it over here in in a summarized manner, right? Not the full requirements. So control C and control B, right? Is that clear everyone? So is there a efficiency factor if you practice with control C and control V? No, no spelling mistakes is not an issue, right? Spelling mistakes is not an issue. ACCA has um, made that clear so many times that you're not penalized for grammar and spelling, right? Fine, if you want to in. Uh, see, if you want to increase the font size, you can just select this. You can just select things from here. Like this, you put your cursor here, you go to the paragraph and you set a bigger heading. See how big the font size has become now to from subject date. But again, that's to me is an inappropriate font size to write in an exam paper. So you can use a smaller font size like heading two. heading two is much better to write. So you can increase the font size of your write up, right? OK, so now do I know what I need to write in A, B, C, D? Can I just copy paste that in A, B, C, D here quickly? So what is to be done in A? Evaluate the audit risk control C. I put it here control V. OK, what I need to do in B design the principal audit procedure. So I control C from here and I put it over here. What I need to do in C uh, matters to consider uh, whether to accept the engagement control C and I put that in C and in the last I need to uh, tell the use of data analytics C control C and control V. See how I have structured my answer and conclusion conclusion. I will write at the end of the answer. See how easy is it to format the briefing note even before starting it. Now you exactly know what you need to do in A, B, C, D, and you will start reading the requirement. You sorry, you will start reading the exhibits now, and you will keep filling up the answer. But how easy is to 
structure a briefing note in a computer based exams tell me about it with a control c and a control v moving between the partner email and the briefing notes yes it is very essential to mention a b c d because that's very important because when your marker is marking your paper he knows which requirement is being marked no we are not uh, we are not repeating the requirements in the introduction you're writing the purpose that my purpose is to do this 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 and under that you're writing your answer the answer for a the answer for b the answer for c the answer for d that sets the format of the briefing note right you cannot do anything with that so is, is everyone clear with control c and control v and the benefits of that is everyone clear that after you read the partner email after you read the partner email it will just take five minutes to formulate a skeleton briefing note so have i made a skeleton briefing note will that help me now to fill up my answer yes you you can do the undo and redo you have the shortcut keys for undo and redo as well uh, all the shortcut keys is given in this document which i have shared with you right the cbe guidance you can see that in front of your screen uh, when you go down this document all the shortcut keys are given over here which you can use in the computer based exams if i can show you that over here they have given you a table of all the shortcut keys which you can use see on the page number five they've given you all the shortcut keys you can use so you can just learn them from here can you see this table control x cut control c copy control v paste control z undo control y redo right is, is the shortcut keys so please read this document which i've shared with you because this is a wonderful document which tells you about things you can use as shortcut keys right exactly the cbe saves your time right because you have a copy paste version which is not in the pen and paper exams okay let's come back to my uh, demonstration okay now first you read the right panel now even uh, once i write the answer on a briefing note and i put a cross over here everything you wrote will not be deleted right it's only the window will go off the screen so once i formulate my briefing note and i know what i need to do in the briefing note i simply put a cross and the briefing note goes off my screen and uh, requirements i've read the partner email right so no need to keep the partner email in front of my screen so i simply put a cross so the partner email goes see my workspace becomes neat and clean it's just like you're working on a laptop at home and you open and close the windows right so i've closed the window now after the partner email uh, i fill up my briefing notes right uh, was the partner uh, was the examiner asking you to perform the analytical procedures as part of audit risk so is there any need of a spreadsheet in this question number one yes the answer automatically saves right the answer is being automatically saved so no worries that your answer will be lost right so is there any need for a spreadsheet to be used here because there was no analytical procedures here right so no need to use the spreadsheets in this paper cross only the answer will be made on the briefing notes right but tomorrow in my day two i will be demonstrating you a question in which i will be guiding you about how you use the spreadsheet uh, if asked for in a triple a paper so i purposely choose a question uh, for my session tomorrow in which i will be illustrating you the briefing notes uh, sorry the spreadsheet okay let's come back to the last thing before the break okay now you after that you read the background information you open the window of the background information and you start reading information from background if you want to copy anything from the background information and you think oh i found a risk and you want to copy that risk in uh, in in the briefing notes this is for example for example uh, in the partner email uh, it was mentioned it is a new audit client and we were writing audit risk now you are writing audit risk and you know it is a new audit client so i copy paste new client from here copy paste the new client from here in the partner email i go to the briefing note and under my evaluate the audit risk have i found my first audit risk number one copy paste new client and will i write the answer under under this crux company crux company is is the new audit client is the new audit client which means that pegasus pegasus will have less knowledge of business will have less knowledge of business initially 
will have less knowledge of business initially, which will increase the detection risk because I'm doing the question on the audit risk, which will increase the detection risk in the first year audit for a stop further. Being the first year audit being the first year audit. There is an additional risk. There is an additional risk of material misstatements in the opening balances material misstatements in the opening balances. I've guided this so many times in my previous webinars that the risk associated with the first year audit. Is that clear to everyone? So the new client, right? So the moment I found a risk, I'll copy that into my evaluate the audit risk and I start writing the answer. So control C and control V will make your answer so easy. Is everyone clear with how I found the new client? How I copy paste new client from the partner email control B and I put number one and I start writing the answer. Is that clear to everyone? Right then you find the number two you go down you find the number two you can put the numberings from here number two. No spelling corrections will not be available. You're not worried about spelling corrections. Just ignore that in, in a computer based exams. You're just typing your answer. Be watchful of your spellings, but if you do spelling mistakes, some of them it's it's not an issue, right? So that's how you fill up the briefing notes and you read the exhibits you copy paste from the exhibits and you can just simply cross the window uh, when you're not using it in 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 context, right? Now a few of the last things before I give you the break. Calculator. If you want to use a calculator for finding materiality, you will click on the calculator. See, I click on the calculator. A calculator comes in front of me. No, you cannot use Grammarly. Uh, uh, I just used it because it was by default in my laptop, but in the computer based exams, you cannot just just ignore that, right? Just ignore that. So you are just uh, not concerned about spelling and grammar mistakes, right Rohit? Yes, CBEs are auto saved. Whatever you write is saved. So <clears throat> can you see this calculator in front of the screen? I press the button calculator and it comes to me. Uh, you can ch change the mode of the calculator. See, I'll click here and it comes to standard mode. I don't need a scientific calculator for the AAA paper, so I can have this standard calculator and I can calculate the materialities. Anything I want to calculate, I can calculate here and write my answer. But can you use your own calculator in the computer based exams? The answer is yes. Can you have your own calculator? The answer is yes. So if you're not comfortable with the on screen calculator, can you carry your own calculator? Yes, you can carry your own calculator. So whether you are giving a computer based exam at a center or you're giving a computer based exam under a remote invigilation, you can have your own calculator with you. So if you're comfortable with your own calculator, don't be worried about using the on screen calculator. Is that clear to all of you? And it's it's given over here, right? It's it's given in the document I've shared with you. Uh, see this document I shared with you. Uh, the guidance document and in this guidance document ACC has made this very clear about the calculator. I don't know why you don't read these documents. Uh, it is not made for a tutor. It's made for the students and still you don't read these documents. So the problem is with the students, right? The problem is not with uh, ACCA. See this. Can you see this uh, page number 12 in front of you? Can you read the cal can you read this calculator paragraph yourself in one minute everyone and tell me you understood this? Can you read this calculator bullet number one in a paragraph quickly and tell me you've read it? Yes, you can calculate things on the spreadsheet as well Manzoor, but I would not prefer you use a spreadsheet unless you are asked to perform the analytical procedure. If you are doing the calcul if you're doing the uh, materiality calculations, just simply do them on a calculator. So can you take your own calculator in the exam? Is, is ACC giving you a permission of that everyone? So is, have your stress level gone down? Okay, good. The last thing uh, another very frequently asked question. Look at this. Can you just read this paragraph in front of your screen this one? So this is a frequently asked question. Even Rabia was asking this question a couple of minutes ago.
please read this bullet and tell me have you understood this uh, can will you be provided the rough papers and exam centers right is that clear so will you be given papers for any rough workings if you're comfortable with that and you want to scribble something on a paper and then write on the screen okay that's great that's great so will you read this document will you read this document for every frequently asked questions you have will you make a habit of reading this uh, document today at the end of the session everyone which i've shared with you so every question you want to ask is given in this document whether i can use the calculator or not whether i will be given the rough papers or not yes 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 uh, you can use the calculator even in a remote invigilated exams right but for the papers uh, in a remote invigilation sometime the proctor allows you to use a paper if you can show him the paper and show him that it's a neat and clean paper and sometimes the proctor don't give you the permission of using the papers in a remote invigilated exams but if you are giving a computer based exam in a center then you are allowed to use a paper as well is that clear to everyone so there is some problems between a remote invigilated computer based exam and a center based computer based exam right is that clear so last things Okay, so calculator. Is there a need to use a calculator in a computer in a computer based exams? For calculator is that fine? So I think calculator is not a big problem, right? Whether it's a remote invigilated exam or it's a center based exam, right? So there's no big need for a calculator. Uh, whatever you want to copy and paste, I would prefer that you copy and paste that in the briefing note where you're writing the answer because anything you write on a scratch pad will not be marked. So instead of you copy first on a scratch pad and then from a scratch pad, you copy to a word processor will take a lot of time. So it's better that you directly copy paste on a briefing note. Uh, Ismail, it's totally up to you. Some students are very comfortable using an on-screen calculator like myself, and some students are not very comfortable using an on-screen calculator. So when, when, once you practice uh, in the next 10, 15 days, you will find your own answer. So in the next 10 to 15 days, you will find an answer. Should I use an on-screen calculator? No, yes. Should I take my own calculator? Yes, no. So every student will be flexible right after 10 to 15 days of practice on the practice platform but start practicing on the practice platform right that's very important so one option is calculator which is uh, flexible among students you can have your own you can use the one on the screen okay i've already given you the uh, importance of highlighting things uh, the order of reading the screen what will you read first what will you read second what will you read third the shortcut keys control c control v control z control y undo redo uh, copy paste control b is the bold you can make things bold uh, strike through function is not used if you want to cut something off you wrote something mistakenly and you don't want the examiner to read it you can just strike through that but again that's a, not a very common function used in a computer based exams you can if you write something and you don't want examiner to read that uh, and you're just into the last one minute of the exam you can just cross through it strike through it or you can just control uh, you can just delete that paragraph with the backspace is that clear to all of you so that's that's the window in front of you right once you complete the question number one you can see the next button you press the next button you go to the question number two then in the same manner you will read the question number two you come to the section b and in the section b you have the question number two you click the next button you come to the section question two which is loading Okay, you come to the question two again. You read the right hand side of the screen first and then you go down reading the requirements what you need to do and then you start reading the exhibits. Now when you come to the question number two again, the order will remain same. You will first read this screen number one. Then you will go down and read the requirements. It's it's different from the question number one, right? In the question number one, I just directly mentioned read the partner email. In over here, I'm telling you to read the requirements because this is not a briefing note. This is not an email, right? So requirement A for 15 marks and requirement B for 10 marks. You'll open them up and see what you need to do in the requirement A and B. 
and after you've read the requirements you will plan your answer in the word processor you will plan your answer in the word processor number two you will read the requirements number three you will plan your answer in the word processor and number fourth you will read the exit up your answer is that one two three four clear and I, i'm demonstrating that once and giving you a break first you read the right panel in question two and question three then you read the requirements number two then you plan your answer on a word processor and then you start reading the exhibits to make up an answer this is the uh, one two three four for question number two and three right and manzoor i'm just coming to your question in next five minutes okay just let me demonstrate that in five minutes and we're taking a break then and a lot more to understand on a computer based exams i cannot just fit everything on day one i still have day two day three day four day five where i will be demonstrating numerous aspects of the computer based exams so don't be worried about it in the next 15 hours you will all be perfect on handling the computer based exams okay now first you will read the screen right you read the screen first and after you've read the screen you come to the requirements you open the requirement a and you say what exactly is the requirement a the requirement a asks you to comment on the quality of planning and performance of the audit of the river company discussing the quality control ethical and other professional issues raised and recommend appropriate actions to be taken so basically you want to discuss the quality control ethical and other professional issues and recommend appropriate action so that's the requirement discussing the issues and recommending actions so i, I control i press control c and i take it on my word processor on my word processor I open my word processor and write over here heading number two a requirement a and I press control V so this is my first requirement and I can even put in bracket 15 marks so I know how much to write when I'm writing the answer on my word processor then I come to back to my requirement B I open the requirement B window and requirement B is evaluate the matters to be considered before Welford accepts the audit of Broadway Group so I copy the requirement B evaluate the matters to accept the audit of the Broadway group control C 10 marks I come back to my word processor and I give some space I come with here B and I put my B requirement here and I put in bracket 10 so this is the second thing I'm doing after reading the requirements third thing sorry first I read the right side of the window then I read the requirements and after reading the requirements I come down with the word processor now have I planned my format on the word processor do I know what I need to do in a and B so in a can I put over here issues and actions I know I need to write issues and actions in a and in the answer a so I can just format my word processor before I start reading the exhibits all of you is that fine and in the second way I need to uh, evaluate the methods that should be considered before Welford accepts the audit of Broadway. So I just put over here matters as a heading and whatever matters I get from the exhibits, I'll keep copy pasting those matters over here. So is it better that before you read the exhibits, you just make a layout of the answer? Yes, in a computer based exams, you, you can just copy the question and paste it in your word processor. Uh, as as a standard header of your question and then you start answering under see I just made two bifurcations of question issues underline actions underline so I know I have to do two things so this is exactly what you can do in a computer based exams right and that's easier so ACC recommend that you can copy the question right in a computer based exams making your life easier yes that's fine you can combine two issues together and write one action but I'm just formulating an, uh, a skeleton structure, right? Not necessarily you should stick to it. Is not everyone clear with number one, two, three? Once you read the right panel, then you come reading the requirements. Number two, then you come putting a structure in the word processor. Then knowing what you need to do, you open up. You close all the unnecessary windows and you come to exhibits you open the exhibit number one and you start reading the exhibit number one you can enlarge the size of the exhibit number one if you want to zoom that out you can zoom it so that it looks big on your screen now you start reading the exhibit number one suppose you get a point in exhibit number one which you believe is a 
ethical issue or a professional issue you can just simply copy paste it from here control c and you go down back to word processor and you say oh i found an issue i'm just giving you an example right you copy paste here and you say okay this is an issue when you start writing it ahead you can take some sentence from the case and you then elaborate that sentence uh, by developing that sentence into two to four sentences so i think control c and control v will help you uh, between the case study and the word processor so you can copy lots of things from the case study and you can bring them on a word processor and you can develop your point so i think that can make your life easier right so if you find a, an issue in a case study you will copy that issue from a case study to a word processor and you will then explain that issue in your own words later is that clear so can can you switch uh, can you use the copy paste from the case study to the word processor so is is that possible so can you copy from the exhibits can you copy from the requirements can you paste things from the requirements and exhibits to the response options right so have you got some knowledge of the interface of the computer based exams the functionalities how to go about using it have have you got something in the la in the last 30 to 40 minutes and still you have 15 hours of this webinar going on and every day you will learn something new about a computer based exam and over the 15 hours you will be perfect so uh, will you start using the platform from today or in the next 24 hours and this is not the end of uh, it is not the end of my guidance on the practice platform this is just the day one and there's still a lot of guidance coming your way right so please ensure you know how to use the highlight option you know how to use the calculator whether you want to use it or not you know the order of reading the right panel and the left panels you know how to control c and how to control v uh, how to increase the font size which are basic commands in the aaa paper because most of the time in the aaa paper you are using a word processor and your uh, you should be very good on word processor you should know the shortcut keys which are given in this pdf document please make a habit of reading this pdf document today uh, this pdf document is a wonderful document which guides you about all the basic rules and regulations you should be knowing about the computer based exams everything which i was guiding you uh, they also tells you about how you can open the window close the window how you can decrease the size of the window how you can increase the size of the window and they also tells you about uh, the shortcut keys so it's a pretty good document provided you give time to it right okay i'm now taking a break uh, and we'll continue on this agenda of the computer based exams uh, even on the day 2 tomorrow and day 3 day 4 day 5 so i'll just make a summary of things we got today from the computer based exams after the break and right after the break i want to spend some reasonable time on the new article uh, which is important and even if time doesn't allow me to complete the new article today don't be worried about it once i start my day 2 tomorrow i'll connect the new article wherever i left today from tomorrow so i'll complete the new article today and if it is not possible to complete it today i'll i'll continue it in the day 2 tomorrow and then we'll take on the day 2 agenda right so no need to rush no need to panic this is an important article and i need to spend a good and a good amount of time on this article so i'll make a summary of the cbe practice platform which we just did today so that you can start exploring it and if i have missed out anything don't be worried about it you have another 12 hours after today which where you will have an excellent approach towards the computer based exam right so i hope you like the first part of the session today and i'm giving you a break now if you can drop in your feedback it's like 10:20 in pakistan 10:20 uh, pm pakistan standard time so we'll explore we'll come back at 10:35 right 10:35 pm pakistan standard time so it's a 15 minutes break 10:35 pm pakistan standard time please be back and i'll resume back with a new article has everyone taken the note we have a break till 10:35 let me put that in the chat box break till 10:35 pm i hope this message has gone to every one of you in your chat box right so i'm just muting myself and please come back because we'll be exploring the new article right after the break stay tuned i'm keeping a screen in front of you if you get time during the break 
please read the screen. This is just a summary of what I did with you in the last 30 minutes. So just go through the summary and right after the break, I'll start the new article off to a break everyone and please drop the feedback of the overall session today and much more to learn on the computer based exams in the next four days to come. Thank you.
Okay, welcome back uh, everyone. Uh, just a confirmation from your side that you can all hear me. And it's loud and clear to all of you. Okay, that's great. So welcome back after the break. Uh, we are into the day one of the practice to pass webinar for June 21 exams for advanced audit and assurance and I'm Kashif Kamran. Uh, prior to the break, uh, we were discussing uh, the practice platform because in most of the countries, including Pakistan, uh, the AAA will be a computer based exam from from June onwards, so it's uh, very, very important that the students should try to log into the practice platform and start using it. I hope my session prior to the break must have given you the encouragement that you explore the practice platform as much as possible, but that's not the end. Uh, every day uh, of this webinar, I will be spending some time on explaining you the features and the do's and don'ts of the practice platform. I will be drilling the past papers on the practice platform as much as possible so that by the end of the 15 hours, you have a good command of the practice platform and you start to do it because the more you practice on the platform, uh, you will find the efficiency improving every day. And when, when you enter the actual exam, you will have a command on the functionalities of the platform. You will have the command on how to open a window and how to close a window, how to switch between windows, uh, how to increase the size and how to decrease the size, uh, how to copy paste uh, and everything. So the more you use them, the better for you, because that is uh, that is something we refer again and again that practice makes you perfect, right? I, I hope you got some encouragement at the start of the session today. And this encouragement will continue on day two, day three, day four, and day five. Uh, I will be guiding you about how to use Excel or a spreadsheet in a in a AAA exam, and what's the usage of a spreadsheet in AAA exam. When will you use it, and when will you not use it? And that is on day two tomorrow. And uh, any other feature of the computer-based exam which is beneficial for you, which you should be using as a student, I'll keep guiding you. Uh, I will be guiding you about that from day two tomorrow up to day five, but I hope the start we took today on the computer based exam, the practice platform like a highlighter scratch pad calculator using the word processor, the copy paste and every such thing. I, I hope that must have helped you right all of you uh, to take a start, but that's not the end, right? That's not the end. We still need to explore a lot about computer based exams over the next few days. Is that clear everyone? Okay, that's great. Now I'm moving towards my second agenda today. Uh, just keeping on hold the computer based exams and the practice platform for tomorrow and just want to spend some time uh, on the new article which was published in April 2021. I hope you have seen this article on the website and I just want to give you an idea about this new article which I am again and again referring to. Uh, if you go to the uh, AAA technical articles and you just type the AAA technical articles on Google, you will come to the first hyperlink. You click on the first hyperlink and you come to the AAA technical articles, right? So on the Google, right, AAA technical articles, click on the first hyperlink and you come to the technical articles of AAA. Now over here, if you just scroll down the technical articles, I've been guiding you about the articles uh, which are in front of your screen every time in my webinar. But over here in these articles, there is a new article added up. You go down, leave the first article, leave the second, leave the third, leave the fourth, leave the fifth. Look at this sixth article right over here. If I can just make a bracket here, look at this article. This is the article which is published in April 2021, and this is a new article. Can it be examined in the June 21 exams? It, it, it can be, it cannot be. But should you read it? Definitely, because you cannot just leave this article and enter the June 21 exams. So let's explore this article uh, to an extent we can uh, by the end of the time today at 11.30. And if something is left, we'll explore that at the start of the day two tomorrow. Right. 
so let's start the journey on the exposure draft and looking at the uh, proposed revision to the code to promote the role and mindset of the professional accountant. So please uh, download this article. This has already been provided to you in the uh, in the uh, handout section of the webinar. You can download it from the handout section, right? So that is already with you. Now, just moving back and exploring this article and uh, taking on this article here. See, this is the article right in front of your screen. Exposure draft. Exposure draft means it's just a current issue. Uh, exposure draft means this is not an affirmative thing, but this is in a phase of development. Proposed revisions to the code to promote the role and mindset expected of a professional accountant. Now you all know professional accountant is a big term, right? A professional accountant even includes the auditors and even includes uh, all the accountancy professions, all the accountancy professions. So this is a wide proposals uh, promoting the role and promoting the mindset expected of a professional accountant. Now, what is in this proposals for a AAA student and how a AAA student should look at this proposals for your exam perspective and where you should be focusing on in this exposure draft? Obviously, you will be reading across the seven pages over the next two days, three days. So you just download this exposure draft and you start to read it. You might understand something, you might not understand something, but the very first thing you have to do is that you scroll over the exposure draft and read every line in every paragraph of the exposure draft uh, in like three to four hours and see how much you understand. Now, my purpose is to make you understand this exposure draft and to give you the right guidance where you should be focusing on in this exposure draft and what benefit will you get out uh, of this exposure draft for your June 2021 exams, right? So what I have done is that instead of reading the article with you and just wasting time uh, in this webinar, I have developed my own summary and I think the summary has already been shared with you in the handout section. Uh, this is the summary which I have developed for my students. I hope you can see this in the handout section. Uh, the new AAA examining team article published in April 2020. Can you all confirm this is available in the handout section? Exposure draft proposed revision to the code to promote the role and mindset expected of a professional accountant. This is a summary and an exam guidance by Kashif Kamran. So let's start the journey. Let's see what is the proposed revision to the code and what the proposed revision um, should mean to our AAA student. Okay, let's start on with the journey. Now, I try to make a summary uh, over here and I just want to read that with you. Uh, I, I believe this uh, revision has come to the code and code is the syllabus area B of your paper and the syllabus area B of your paper is ethical and professional issues. Now, as part of your syllabus, as, uh, as a AAA student, you should have an idea about the code of conduct and the code of conduct is a syllabus area B. So I think this exposure draft is hitting the syllabus area B and if it is examined, it will be examined in the context of the syllabus area B. So that's the very first sentence I have marked over here in my summary that this this exposure draft uh, covers the numerous aspects which are examinable part of the syllabus area B of the AAA paper and the AAA Triple uh, A syllabus already includes ethical and professional issues. So the students should be well equipped with this exposure draft and they should have an idea about the proposed changes which have come to the code of conduct. Right. So uh, in terms of the placement of the question, Bahawal, it's too early. Uh, examiner can put a question on this exposure draft anywhere in the section A or section B. We know syllabus area B is a flexible syllabus area and being a flexible syllabus area, it can come in the question number one, two or three anywhere. The bottom line is we should be prepared about the summary of this exposure draft, right? Wherever it gets tested in the exam paper. But in terms of the syllabus area, this is a syllabus area B. The next bullet, uh, I just try to summarize uh, what is the key message of the exposure draft. Uh, this exposure draft uh, is covering numerous aspects uh, relating to the professional accountant role. So that's one thing covered in this article, the role of the professional accountant. Public interest is another area covered in this exposure draft. 
concept of integrity has also been covered in this exposure draft objectivity has also been covered in this exposure draft uh, professional behavior has been covered in the exposure draft and inquiring mind has been covered in the exposure draft now these are the terms which you are not listening for the first time inquiring mind professional behavior objectivity concept of integrity public interest professional accountants these are not jargons which you are all listening for the first time am i right but these are areas where changes have been brought in these are areas where something has changed and you should know that because it's an exposure draft so professional accountant role public interest concept of integrity objectivity professional behavior and even inquiring mind and not just that the danger the dangers of being biased and the internal culture of the firm what is the danger that the accountant is biased what sort of biasness is the article talking about and you are all familiar with the word bias and you know that whenever the auditor is bias it is a threat to objectivity right and how can a culture of the firm contribute towards overcoming the danger of bias and how can the culture of the firm overcomes uh, the concept of integrity so how many things have been gone into this article just just recap number one the professional accountant role number two the public interest number three the concept of integrity number four the objectivity number five the professional behavior number six the inquiring mind number seven the danger of being biased and number eight internal culture of the firm so these are the key learnings when you are reading across the seven page article is that bullet number two clear to all of you so i i just tried highlighting the areas which you need to touch upon and make a summary of when you're reading the actual article from the acc website is that clear can you give, can you respond to my question everyone okay that's great for understanding okay now moving on next bullet uh, in the next bullet uh, i have made it clear several times that every time there is an exposure draft uh, will it be examined in the next exam setting the answer is yes and no both we have seen in the past practices of the examiner that every time a new article is published it it has been examined in the immediate next exam setting that that is the practice of the examiner but we have also seen that that sometime examiners skip the next exam setting M might be that he don't give you this exposure draft in the June exams and give you it, it in the September exams. But you cannot just go unprepared uh, about this article in the June exams. You still need to prepare it in an effective manner because it might come in June or it might come in September or might even come in December. Irrespective of that, this is a new article which you should have your have you which you should have on your fingertips. Okay, now the key five changes uh, and the definition used and the terminologies introduced by the exposure drafts are potential to the AAA paper in the coming exam settings in 2021, right? So when I read this article, so I try to summarize uh, the changes into five. Five changes. There are lots of definitions used, lots of terminologies used in this exposure draft, which I believe is a potential to a AAA student. Now I tried making a summary of that in my document and I will be reading through that summary and guiding you about the potential changes which have come in the exposure draft and why. Okay, let's get down to the background of this exposure draft. What is the reason of the background? What, what was the reason of the change? The background. There has been a growing demand on IESBA to strengthen the concept of professional skepticism. So there was a growing demand on IESBA to strengthen the concept of professional skepticism. Look at this word strengthen because professional skepticism is not a new terminology right so it is nothing introduced it's just to strengthen it's just to strengthen the concept of professional skepticism number one number two requiring all professional accountants to exercise it rather than solely the audit practitioner i i hope you will agree with me that whenever we use the professional skepticism one thing which strikes our mind is the auditor am i right but now what iesba is doing they want to broaden the concept of professional skepticism not just to the auditor but to every professional accountant 
So do you do you understand the bullet number two requiring all professional accountants to exercise professional skepticism, not just the audit practitioner? Because before this, professional skepticism was a jargon confined to the audit practices. And you have a topic of professional skepticism, right, in the AAA paper. So is, is everyone clear with the background that what was the reason of introducing the changes in the code? Because there was a growing demand on IESBA to strengthen the concept of professional skepticism and to require all professional accountants to exercise it, not just the audit practitioner. If you're clear, let's move further. The proposed changes. Now the proposed changes to the code of conduct have been given in a table below. So let's understand the proposed changes and let's understand one by one what a proposed change means to you as a AAA student, right? Now you can see the table over here. Uh, and in this table, the column number two is the proposal areas. These are the proposal areas which uh, IESBA has introduced, proposal areas. And under every proposal area, what is the proposed change is in the column number three. Can you see this table clearly in front of your screen everyone? The column number two is the proposal area which you should know for your exams in June 21 and the column number three tells you about the proposed changes. Is that clear? Everyone can see that. So I'll, I'll pick every proposal area and I'll discuss with you the proposed changes and if anything needs an elaboration, I will be giving you the elaboration. Now let's look at the first area of change. The first area of change is the role and responsibility of a professional accountant role and responsibility of a professional accountant you all know who is a professional accountant right the auditor is a professional accountant even any other role any other role adopted by an accountant is a professional accountant right the professional accountants can be the management accountants can be the financial accountants can be the auditors can be the internal auditors so professional accountants can take different roles right now irrespective whatever role you are taking as a professional accountant the code of conduct is highlighting your role and responsibilities as a professional accountant let's see what is the role and responsibility of a professional accountant i'm using the short form here pa pa means the professional accountant the professional accountants are involved in a wide range of roles and acknowledge that organization involves the professional accountant in these activities because they recognize the skill and value they bring to the activities they undertake. Do you believe professional accountants are involved in a wide range of role in an organization? Like internal auditors, like external auditors, like financial accountants, like financial consultants, like advisors, like management accountants? Uh, are they involved in wide ranging roles professional accountants and and do they bring the right set of skills to the organization do they bring the right set of values to the organization where they work in so do, do they make a contribution to the organization because of their skills and roles whether they're working as a management accountant or they're working as a financial accountant or they're working as an auditor or they're working as a tax consultant or they're working as a tax advisor whatever so they, they have a role right and they bring the right sets of skills and values to the organization and that is what the organization really appreciates in the bullet number two it tells us that the professional accountant should work in public interest that's very important the public interest the professional accountant should work in the public interest and adhere to the code and all relevant laws and regulations in the discharge of the responsibility now if you are a professional accountant in pakistan for example, you're not just adhering to the codes, the code of conduct, you're also adhering to your national laws and regulations. Now that is the best discharge of your responsibilities. So as a professional accountant, you should work in the public interest. Right? So the the the, the change which has been brought by the code is the definition of a professional accountant is the clarity on the role of professional accountant and is that that the professional accountant should work in the public interest and should adhere to the code because the code the code was not using the word professional accountant with clarity right now the code is using the word professional accountant with clarity and the code is recognizing the wider roles of the professional accountant with clarity and the code is also recognizing that the professional accountant needs to work in a public interest which is very important and they should adhere to code so there is a reinforcement right 
and there is a clarity on the role of a professional accountant and how they should work in the public interest so the number one bullet the role and responsibility of a professional accountant number one if i can just take it down to my word file i was using for the webinar today and i can just construct my new article summary here okay we're just discussing the new article which is the exposure draft and in this exposure draft something has been uh, in this exposure draft sorry number one something has been newly introduced in this exposure draft something has been reinforced in this exposure draft something has been clarified so the purpose of the exposure draft is not just to bring a new thing it's also to reinforce something it's also to clarify something for for the sake of clarity right now the first thing we are understanding uh, is the proposal the first proposal we are understanding currently number one is the proposal which relates with role and responsibility of a professional accountant now you have already seen what has been the highlighting point of the code here but this proposal basically has been brought to reinforce the role reinforce the role of pa to bring clarity to the role of pa so it's not it's not something new it's just a reinforcement and it's just a clarity to the role of the pa and the pa should work in the public interest and the pa should adhere with relevant laws and regulation is number one clear to all of you so this is the first proposal under the exposure draft role and responsibility of a professional accountant so this is just a reinforcement and this is just a clarity on the role and on the public interest of a professional accountant is everyone sound and clear on it right so with the growing need of professional accountants with a growing role of the professional accountant it was very very important for IESBA to come with the reinforcement and clarity on the role of the PA and that the PA should work in the public interest because there is a growing demand of uh, the growing demand and lots of stakeholders are relying on the work of the PA so there was a growing pressure on the PA as well that the PA should work in the public interest and adhere to the laws and regulations okay let's look at the proposal number two then the proposal number two which has been brought in is much more important for a triple a student because it is about the changes to the definition of objectivity and professional behavior now that's important changes to the definition of objectivity and professional behavior now you all know the code of conduct right you all know the code of conduct right and you all know about objectivity right and you all know about professional behavior you must have studied that in your double a paper and your triple a paper professional behavior and objectivity now what has been what has been important here changes changes so that's an important word here let's see what has been the change in the definition of objectivity and what has been the change in the definition of professional behavior let's let's find the change and this is very very important for a triple a student to know because objectivity and professional behavior is part and parcel of your syllabus so let's find the change what if the examiner ask you explain uh, the revised definition of objectivity or define the revised definition of objectivity because every time a new article is tested the new article is tested for knowledge the new article is tested for knowledge so you should know the definitions even so many times in the past attempts whenever the new article came in the examiner has even asked for definitions from the new article so you need to prepare in an excellent manner here right is that clear so let's let's find out the changes in the definition of objectivity and professional behavior i'm taking back my table to explore it okay let's let's find the changes number one the the proposed uh, over here it's to propose to amend the definition of objectivity in order to present it in a positive manner rather than a negative manner the 
previous definition. The previous definition of objectivity was in a negative manner. It was put in a negative manner and the code of conduct thought it's very important that we put the definition of objectivity in a positive manner rather than in a negative manner. Now when you look at the previous definition of objectivity, it was put in a way which was in a negative manner. Look at this. The previous definition. The previous definition of objectivity was not compromising professional or business judgment. It used to start with the word not. So if anyone asks you what is a what is objectivity? So you used to tell not compromising the professional or business judgment. The definition was valid, but the definition was put in a negative manner. So the code of conduct decided rather than putting the definition with the word not, let's put the definition in a more positive manner. And this is the proposed new definition. The no the new proposed definition is actual exercise of professional or business judgment without these being compromised by factors such as vice conflict of interest or any form of undue influence by or an undue reliance on other parties now see this is the new definition actual exercise of professional or business judgment without these being compromised by factors such as bias undue influence conflict of interest etc so will you learn this definition now this definition is not saying not compromising professional or business judgments this definition is saying actual exercise of professional or business judgment without being influenced or without being biased so is this definition important from an examination point of view so if the examiner asks you to define objectivity will you define objectivity this way which i put in red or you will use the not definition. No, you cannot use the not definition. This not definition is to be strike strike through not use it. So are you clear with the old and new definition now? Will you learn the new definition everyone? Right the red one guys right? the red one will go into the exam paper. So the new definition is the actual exercise actual exercise of professional or business judgment not compromising professional or business judgment was an old definition. So what changes have been brought in objectivity the definition and they've shifted from a negative definition to a positive definition. Yes, it's still an exposure draft right uh, which will be implemented in the next few months, but this exposure draft is examinable. So you should know the new definition. So if the examiner asks you the new definition of objectivity, you will give this definition to the examiner, right? So the very first change is what the very first change is that we have moved from the negative definition to a positive definition. So negative to positive definition. Will all of you remember that? Number one. Yes, you should use the new definition, Osama. That's the reason I'm telling you, right? What's the reason of bringing the article? Who brought this article? The AAA examining team brought this article for a student to know the new definition for June 21 exams, right? Exactly, exactly. You should you should now use this new definition because this is an article by the examiner. So negative to a positive definition, right? Move back next. Uh, the next thing the IESBA has also proposed to include a technological bias. As a result of the technological advancement, particularly the artificial intelligence and data analytics and their impact on professional accountants objectivity. Technological bias is a new term now as a student what if the examiner asks you what is a technological bias because auditors should be free from bias right in order to be objective true but what if the examiner asks you define technological bias and you might be confused in the exam exam paper what is a technological bias and the technological bias is a new terminology right which has been brought in the code of conduct so should if the auditor is biased Will the auditor be objective? If the auditor is biased, will the auditor be objective? Should the auditor be free from bias? Right, whenever uh, Sadia, whenever examiner ask anything on the exposure draft, he will he will refer the exposure draft in the requirement. He will say as per the new exposure draft, something like that, and he will ask you something. So if the examiner asks you something about the exposure draft, then you will quote the exposure draft 
and you will reproduce the knowledge of the exposure drop, right? So auditor should be free from bias in order to be objective. Now there is a new new bias coming here, technological bias, because of the advent of the artificial intelligence and because of the advent of the data analytics. What is a technological bias? Now, if you go down and explore what is a technological bias, let's let let me explain you that. Technological bias is very simple. Uh, if you just give me one minute. If I can put the definition in front of you for a technological bias. Just one minute, right? So you can understand it in a more proper manner. Okay, just let me put it with you just one minute. Okay, I hope you can see the screen back right now. What is a technological bias, right? Now try to understand uh, technological bias is basically that the auditor gets influence with technology and the auditor starts believing that whatever results have been produced by a computer system or whatever results have been put in by a computer program is right and he starts to trust computer. So if the auditor trusts the computers or if the auditor trust the computer systems or if the auditor starts to trust the results of the computer systems because more and more computers are being used in organization and most of the results most of the financial statements and everything is being produced from the computer systems so if you trust the computer you trust the computers uh, sorry you trust the computer you trust the results generated from the computers results generated from the computer that means you are just relying on the computer and you are biased you are relying on the computer and you're not doing anything which you should have done as an auditor you trust the computer you trust the results generated by the computer without doing any testing of the computers or without doing any procedures on the computer or without making your own independent uh, working and you just rely on the working of the computer then you will be biased if you want to avoid the technological bias the auditor should develop their own workings and compare that with the computer working with the computer working and the auditor should also test the controls of the computer auditor should test controls around technology before placing reliance on technology you cannot just have a blind reliance on technology that is a technological bias right so if the auditor goes to an audit of an organization and he have a blind reliance see auditor never place a blind reliance on anything auditor should test the controls around computers believe computers are working right can can computer makes error give me an answer can 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 there be a malfunctioning in a computer can there be an error in a computer can the computer make errors while they're doing a calculation so can we trust on them 100 percent can we trust on them 100 percent no but if the auditor trusts them on a hundred percent basis that is known as a technological bias is that clear to everyone so can we have a blind reliance on a computer or should we perform test of controls on computers and should we perform procedures on computer? Should we have our own independent workings and we compare that with computer? Is that better approach to audit? Everyone. Or we can just have a blind reliance on computer. Is that right? Is that wrong? Blind reliance on computer. Is that right? Is that wrong? Is that, that is absolutely wrong. So should should the auditor have an independent working should the auditor test the controls around computer the technology before he places the reliance so can can auditor rely on technology yes but before placing reliance on technology should he test 
the systems around technology? Can auditor place a blind reliance even on an expert? Can an auditor place a blind reliance even on the internal auditor? No. So how can the auditor place a blind reliance on technology? So with the advent of technology, with the greater use of technology, the auditor should ensure that whenever the auditor is relying on technology, you should not have a perception that every time technology is right. So this is a this is if you have this perception, this is a very wrong perception as an auditor perception that technology is always right. Technology is always right. Is, is that the right perception? The code of conduct says this is the biasness. This perception is the biasness. I hope you're getting my message here. This perception is the biasness. So should we have this perception? Is that the right perception? If if the auditor has this perception, is 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 the auditor entering into a technological bias? Are you clear? So is everyone clear of how to go about defining a technological bias? Even if on Google, you go on Google after my session today, go on Google and write on Google technological bias, and you will get a very good definition of technological bias. You can learn that for exam paper. Right? So that's that's the next change which has been brought in a definition of a technological bias as part of objectivity. So if the auditor has a technological bias, will he be objective? Answer. If the auditor has a technological bias, is he objective? No. Okay, the last thing from this part of the discussion. The definition, the last thing, the definition of professional behavior has been strengthened. Has it been changed? No. Has the definition of professional behavior changed? No, it says the definition of professional behavior has been strengthened. Has been strengthened to include not just compliance with the code, but also to act in the public interest. So the definition of professional behavior, it has just been strengthened and it is not just you comply with a code of conduct. It's also that you work in the public interest. So that's the third important thing, right? Which you should know from the proposal that. The definition of professional behavior has been strengthened to include not just compliance with the code of conduct, but also to work in the public interest. So as a professional accountant, your responsibility is not just to comply with the code of conduct. Your responsibility also is to work in the public interest because the public relies on the work of the professional accountant. The public relies on the work of an auditor even. So more and more stakeholders, more and more sections of the public, and more and more third parties are increasingly relying on the work of auditors. Am I right? It, so does that put a burden on the accountants to work in public interest? Is, is more and more people relying on accountants, auditors, and different roles of accountants? So is, is that increasing the demand that they should also work in the public interest? Right, so number two, Changes changes to objectivity and professional behavior. Is that clear to all of you? Number one thing you should know is the change of the definition from negative to positive in terms of objectivity. Uh, introducing the terminology technological bias due to advent of technology and then strengthening the definition of a professional behavior from not just complying with code, but also to work in the public interest. Right? Is that clear to all of you? The proposals? Okay, one last proposal for the class today. Number three. If you explore the number three proposal from the exposure draft, back to the table. The new application material to the principle of integrity. So we have brought some new uh, the code of conduct has brought some new application material to the principle of integrity is principle of integrity a new principle. No, the code of conduct has brought some new application material to the principle of integrity, right? So the number third proposal is the new application new application material to the concept of integrity. Integrity is not a new concept. Integrity is a concept you must have studied in the double A paper and then again in the triple A paper. But let's see what new concept material has been brought to the principle of integrity and what you should know as a triple A student. Okay, I'm, I'm reading the column in front of the new application material, 
which has been brought for integrity let's let let me do it larger and let's read what have been some of the new material in integrity integrity includes having the determination to act appropriately when confronted with dilemmas or difficult situation is that the good definition code of conduct has brought in determination to act appropriately integrity when confronted when confronted with a dilemma or a difficult situation now someone is bribing you is that a difficult situation and determination to act appropriately someone is ask someone is asking you to cheat now that is a dilemma determination to act appropriately is integrity so is is that a right definition everyone determination to act appropriately when confronted with the dilemmas or a difficult situation right are you clear with the bullet number 1 everyone okay number 2 when confronted with dilemmas or difficult situations such as such as so that means below is the examples what can be some difficult dilemmas and what can be some difficult situations you might be confronted with where you need to act appropriately number 1 standing one's ground when facing pressure to do otherwise now at times when you were working in an office environment or in a workplace environment as an accountant we do feel pressure from our directors the directors asking us to window dress the financial statement or the director asking us to manipulate the results standing one's ground when facing pressure to do otherwise that is the determination to act appropriately standing one's ground when facing pressure to do otherwise is that clear everyone so that is your determination to act appropriately as an accountant number 2 challenging others challenging others when appropriate even when doing so create potential adverse personal or organizational consequences challenging others if you think you are a manager you are a finance manager right and you believe your finance director is wrong challenge him don't just say oh he is my finance director if i challenge him i might lose my job no that is not the definition of integrity a lot of time a professional accountant doesn't challenge because he has a fear of losing job am i right do you agree so if you are a manager you will never challenge your director because you know if i challenge my director my director will not like it and my director will say okay you are fired from the job so the second situation is challenging others when appropriate and number 3 situation is the iesba dropped the term moral courage from its proposal and instead used to act appropriately as above believing that the term moral might be misunderstood in different countries so basically they are saying moral courage you should have a moral courage right to speak in front of your director or you should have a moral courage not to accept a bribe or you should have a moral courage to speak the truth but the code of conduct has dropped the term moral courage for integrity cross through because it, they thought that moral courage might be a misunderstood term and instead they brought a term instead used to act appropriately act appropriately so what is the jargon you will be using in the exam paper moral courage or to act appropriately in a given situation so if someone ask you to define integrity will you say integrity is a moral courage or will you say integrity is to act appropriately which term will you use act appropriately right so please ensure that in an exam paper when you are defining integrity so integrity means to act appropriately determination to act appropriately when confronted with dilemmas or difficult situation so uh, there, there has been a reinforcement here which you should know for exam paper number 1 determination to act appropriately when confronted with difficult situations right and will you remember the examples i've given you number 1 standing one grounds standing one grounds that's the first example here number 2 challenging challenging others you should challenge others that's very important right so these were the two areas where you should act appropriately and how would you assure you are acting appropriately when you stand one grounds stand one ground means 
that you are affirm if someone offers you a bribe stand one ground say no i cannot take a bribe even though you might lose a job standing one's ground is that clear muhammad arslan so standing one ground is if someone asks you to manipulate the financial statement will you is that clear so did uh, is everyone clear with the new application material to the principle of integrity that the code of conduct is defining integrity in a different manner so it, it does integrity means to be straightforward no will you write the definition uh, that in the exam paper integrity doesn't means to be straightforward anymore integrity now means determination to act appropriately will you remember that keyword for exam paper so are you clear on number one number two number three from the code of conduct provisions we still have number four and number five which i will start at the beginning of my day two tomorrow the fourth and the fifth which i'll do tomorrow and then we'll wrap up this article but i hope the encouragement has been given to you to read this article which is spread on seven pages and i hope this summary document will help you uh, even if you read the summary document that's an excellent preparation you can have uh, about this document for your upcoming exams in june so will you take a print out of this uh, summary document i prepared for you as a tutor and will you go through this summary document for the day to tomorrow just to ensure that you know exactly where the changes have come in so was this document effective I, I thought initially you might be struggling with this document, but I hope you start making sense of this document now, right? So please ensure this new article uh, is on your fingertips. I will be spending another 10 to 15 minutes tomorrow on this new article defining how things have changed into the code for a professional accountant. And I hope you will start using the practice platform even. And I hope the encouragement uh, which has been given to you on the use of the practice platform, you will start to follow it. And please ensure that you watch my previous webinars, the March 2021 webinar, the December 20 webinar, as a minimum, as a minimum. Now, from tomorrow, when I take on my webinar, I will be going on specific agendas. Uh, I will be using the practice platform tomorrow as well when I drill business risk. But I have purposely chosen uh, a question tomorrow where I will also be illustrating to you how to use a spreadsheet when a question asks you to perform an analytical procedure. So if a question is asking you to perform an analytical procedure, how will you make use of an Excel and a spreadsheet and the word processor document for writing a business risk answer? So we have a good agenda tomorrow, a business risk and using the analytical procedures in terms of ROM and I will be completing the article which I started today, which is the exposure draft and will be giving you a lots of do's and don'ts on the practice platform tomorrow as well. So that's not the end of the practice platform. The journey continues. We have a specific topic coming tomorrow. Today's session was a journal session just to give you an awareness about the AAA CBEs and more importantly to give you an awareness of the recently published article. I hope there are two benefits of the session today. Number one, uh, you got to know about the new article if you were unaware of it and you will make a plan to study it am i am i correct on that right and the the encouragement of the practice platform right the encouragement of the practice platform right muhammad arsalan how to use a blank workspace i will be guiding you about that tomorrow so don't be worried about it so if if you want to practice a past paper which is not on the practice platform muhammad arsalan how would you use the blank workspace I, i'll be using the blank workspace over the next four days because there are lots of questions which i will be doing in the webinar which are not available on the practice platform so eventually i have to go to the blank workspace right so don't be worried about it i was very clear today that this is not the end of the computer based understanding you will be understanding the computer based platform over the next 15 hours this was just the first one so have i told you everything about the computer based environment no there's still much in store right and uh Sayyid Waris, if you want to submit your answers, you write on a computer based environment, you can just copy that uh, answer on a Word document, a Microsoft Word document, and you can email to the tutor. So whatever answer you have wrote in a Word processor or on a briefing note in the practice platform, you can just copy that into a Microsoft Word 
and you can send that to the tutor for checking right so if anyone of you has missed some part of the webinar today you will be getting the recordings of it tomorrow on the whatsapp group and on the acca Vimeo channel and if uh, any documents i've used today i will be sharing them on the whatsapp group so don't be worried about it if any whatsapp group is full i will be sharing the link of the third whatsapp group so don't be worried about that as well uh, can you just give me a quick feedback about the overall session today uh, was it beneficial to all of you in terms of understanding just the right exam rigor for june 21 and there is plenty much in store coming your way over the next 12 hours okay and i think over the next 15 hours the five days you will have a very good command on the computer based exams because this is just the trailer and there's much more on it so i believe 15 hours will be a good enough time for all of you to start working on a computer based platform and will you should start working on it from today or from tomorrow right so thank you very much for uh, participating uh, in this live webinar i would encourage that uh, the session tomorrow uh, when it starts at 8 30 pm you've all come with the reading of the article uh, I have stopped at number three today, right? So I, I believe when you come tomorrow in the session and just to ensure we wrap up quickly, you will come with the reading of the number four and number five, right? Okay, thank you very much for that. Uh, so I'm just wrapping up my webinar now and I'll see you back tomorrow, day two, 8.30 p.m. And we'll be starting on with the agenda of business risk, risk of material misstatement, how to use analytical procedure, more about the practice platform, and completing the article. Take care of yourself. Have a nice practice ahead of your exams coming up on the 7th of June. And I'll be back with another live session tomorrow. Till then, have a nice day, all of you. It's your tutor, Kashif Kamran, signing off from the day one of the AAA Practice to Pass webinar being organized by ACC Pakistan. Take care. Have a nice day ahead. Goodbye and Allah Hafiz.